The universe is big. No, forget that. It's huge. It's larger than the largest thing any human being can possibly imagine. But how do we know? How do we know how big the universe is? How do we know how far away galaxies and stars and planets and other objects are? How do we measure the vast distances to objects in our universe? Well, there are a few ways, and we're going to learn about them right now. To measure the distances to planets and stars, we use something called parallax. To understand how parallax works, take a pen. Hold it pretty close to your face and close one eye. Now, if you switch eyes back and forth, the pen actually appears to move a little bit against the background. That's because our eyes are separated. They're not in the same spot, and we have two of them. Now let's try the same experiment, but let's move the pen a little bit further away from our face. Close one eye and switch back and forth. Again, the pen appears to move, but it was a little bit different this time. In which of those two cases did the pen appear to move more? When it was further away or when it was closer? The answer is, the pen moves a lot more when it's closer. The separation of our eyes becomes a little bit more important when the pen is close to us. This is the exact same thing when we're talking about looking for planets or stars. If we can measure the distance between our eyes, which we can, and we can measure the difference in position of the pen for each eye, which we can, we can do a little bit of math and figure out the distance from our eyes to the pen. That's parallax. Now how do we do this in space? By the year 1609, Johannes Kepler had derived his three laws of planetary motion, and using them he was able to figure out the relative distances of all the planets. He came up with a scale model of the entire solar system. The only thing that was missing was how big it was. He couldn't measure any of the actual distances, so although he knew that Saturn was twice as far from the Sun as Jupiter was, he didn't have any actual numbers in kilometers to put to it. Over 50 years later, the famous astronomer Giovanni Cassini actually was able to measure the distance to Mars using parallax. Here's how he did it. When he was in Paris, at the same time, a colleague was over in South America. And at the exact same time, both of them looked up to the sky and measured the position of Mars relative to the background stars. Once they finished taking their measurements, they got together and compared the results. They compared the positions of Mars in the sky from their observations, and because they knew exactly where they were on the Earth, they could measure the distance between them, the baseline. Using some simple mathematics, the same way that we did to calculate the distance to our pen, they were able to figure out the exact distance between the Earth and Mars. Once this distance was known, all of Kepler's ratios came into play, and all of a sudden, we had a scale factor for how big the solar system was. Doing the math, we were able to figure out the distances from the Earth to the Sun, from the Earth to the other planets, from the Sun to all of the other planets. We were able to figure out the way our entire solar system works and how big it really is. We now knew the distance from the Earth to the Sun, and we have a much bigger baseline to work with, making parallax infinitely more powerful. The distance from the Earth to the Sun is 150 million kilometers, which means if we look up at a star and measure its position, and we come back six months later and measure the position of the same star, we have a baseline of 300 million kilometers. And if that star has appeared to move just a tiny little bit, we can do the same parallax measurements as before to figure out the distance to that star. Problem was, stars are so much further away than all the planets and all the other objects in our solar system that this method really only worked for stars that were closer than about 300 light years, which is not a huge amount of them. For more distant stars, we had to come up with a much more powerful method than simple parallax. As our understanding of stars grew, we were able to classify them into different spectral types. Certain types of stars, we noticed, all had the same brightness. It's like taking a bunch of 40 watt light bulbs doesn't matter how close to us or how far away it is, that light bulb is always 40 watts. It's always outputting the same amount of power. For a star, this is known as the absolute magnitude. It's how bright the star really is. Now if you take our light bulb, when it's close to my face, it looks a lot brighter than it does if it's 10 meters away. 
how bright it appears is what we call its apparent magnitude, and it's the exact same for stars. Stars appear brighter if they're closer to us, and dimmer if they're further away. So if we can figure out the star's spectral type, we know its absolute magnitude. And if we look at it in the sky, we can see how bright it appears to us, its apparent magnitude. Combining the two, we can figure out exactly how far away that star is. This method works very well for most of the stars in our galaxy, and if we can figure out the distance to each individual star in our galaxy, we can make a map of the structure of the Milky Way. When we did this, we found out that the Milky Way galaxy looked a lot like other galaxies in space. It had spiral arms and different regions of more stars and less stars. We were able to figure out our place in the galaxy. Pretty amazing. But now it was time to take it a step further. We had to start measuring the distances to other galaxies. In order to measure the distance to another galaxy, we needed a new and more powerful method. You see, galaxies are so far away that we can't see the individual stars. We just don't have powerful enough telescopes yet. This means that we can't determine what type of stars are there, and we can't determine how far away they are. Enter the supernova, the explosion of a massive star. These supernova explosions are so powerful, they can outshine the entire galaxy in which they reside. We see supernova explosions in other galaxies all the time, all over the universe. Now there's a certain type of supernova in astronomy called the Type 1a. This usually happens when you have a white dwarf star and a massive red giant star orbiting each other. They're what we call companions. As the two stars orbit each other, the gravity from the white dwarf causes material to come off of the red giant and feed the white dwarf, making it bigger and more massive. When the mass of the white dwarf star reaches exactly 1.6 times the mass of our sun, that star explodes as a supernova, becoming brighter than its entire host galaxy. And every time a type 1a supernova explodes at 1.6 times the mass of our sun, it explodes with the exact same brightness every single time. So when a type 1a supernova explodes in a distant galaxy, we see it outshine that entire galaxy. We can measure how bright it appears, its apparent magnitude. And of course, we know how bright it actually is, its absolute magnitude. Using those two numbers, we can calculate the distance to that supernova, and by extension, the distance to that galaxy. Now we can finally measure the incredible distances to the galaxies in our universe and piece together the large-scale structure of the cosmos. Understanding parallax, the spectral type of stars, and how a type 1a supernova works, when we combine these methods, we can figure out the distance to any object in our entire universe and piece together the large-scale structure of the cosmos. It even allowed us to figure out how fast the universe is expanding, and it led to the discovery of the mysterious force that we call dark energy. But that's a story for another time. This is how we determine distances in astronomy.